Live from beautiful Ohio, it's the OK Boomer podcast, featuring siblings, the real Jean and Laura. Happy New Year. Hello, hello, I'm Jean. And I'm Laura. And we are here to encourage all you boomers, millennials, and everyone in between to be happily okay. It is 2021. Woo! It is confetti, glitter, happiness, joy. Just going to kind of laughingly share with you is that around this time of year, you'll see lots of um, articles, posts from the relationship happy living happy life experts right and they'll tell you like oh you don't feel compelled to make resolutions on january 1 you can make resolutions anytime the date doesn't matter but i would say this year the date really matters doesn't it it's so great to not be in 2020 anymore yes of any other time we're celebrating a new year more than ever 21 finally out of that darn 2020 oh may it be better right we really do want everyone to be happily okay this year but even though it's a new year i still have a little feeling of afterglow laura do explain but i think i know what you're talking about right well afterglow um came from the the concept of the light or the sun, uh, the light that remains after the sun has set. Okay. Which we maybe don't experience as much in Ohio. It's so cloudy at times here, but apparently <laughs> after the sun sets, you can still see that a little bit of light. All right. Well, afterglow also means those good feelings that we have after something, you know, fun has happened, nice has happened. You still have those warm feelings. And especially with Christmas this year, I'm still in the Christmas afterglow. What about you? Good for you. I am definitely in that wonderful afterglow. And a friend of mine and I, we always talk about how the best time, even though we love Christmas and enjoy it, is just thinking about all of it later because you don't have to worry about the dinner. You don't have to worry about gifts. I actually was in the grocery store yesterday and saw all the sale Christmas items and thought, I don't need to think about any of that anymore. It's just kind of a good feeling. But I had a great Christmas. Yes, and one thing that's especially wonderful, well, actually two wonderful things I want to hear about, okay, from you, two things. First of all, did you get your chicken tongs? No, I didn't. No. I told Santa oh. chicken tongs. It seemed pretty clear. I noted the commercial. No chicken tongs appeared. I maybe I maybe I was naughty. I don't know. Okay, well maybe yeah. next year. Maybe. But something else that did come through for you that was wonderful was your baby news. Yes, and I suppose that makes up for the chicken tongs. <laughs> Perhaps. No, on December 8th, we had the wonderful blessing of a brand new little baby girl. And she's just darling. She's precious. She's beautiful. So, I mean, 2020, although I'm glad it's over, gave us a grandson in March when the whole thing began. And then here near the end with a little girl. So we have a girl and a boy. How blessed are we? Very blessed. And they're all doing well. And, and, and parents are doing well. And Yeah. I'm so proud of them all. So, yeah. A lot of fun. That that was truly the best gift. I mean, it sounds corny to say, but obviously it was just an amazing gift. Yeah. Very thankful. I Very thankful. See them all more. I can't wait to give them hugs, too. I know. Well, we're still speaking of afterglow, Laura, and you've hinted what you're going to share with us. So I'll leave use afterglow to segue into your Christmas Eve dinner. Does afterglow fit in with that? Perhaps it does if we're picturing little sparks of warmth and joy that come out of your oven. All right. <laughs> that was good, Laura. That was good. I, I yes. just... I, I, my skills with my oven lately have been very poor. As you remember, I had the pizza that caught on fire, and that's like, I think the third time I've had pizza catch on fire in my oven. I thought well, it that really say, caught on fire, by the way, just in case somebody missed that. I mean, it really did caught on fire. Oh, yes. I mean, the fire department came. 
yes, yes, horrific flames. Nothing bad happened, but yes. So I, my history is not stellar with ovens. All right, so Christmas dinner, I think I've got it. I've got it down. I prepare the hash brown casserole and the corn casserole all ahead of time. The strawberry pretzel salad all ahead of time. I was feeling very on top of things. Yeah. Then I realized that because we had a small Christmas, the daughters came over and they came over a little earlier, which was delightful. Playing with the baby, time's getting away from me. So I have a beautiful beef tenderloin, which now mm. I've decided I was debating between the slow cook method and the fast method. Everybody was hungry. So I said, I'll go with the fast method, which dear barefoot Contessa, Ina Garden, whatever her name is, her recipes are fantastic. So I followed it just precisely, put all the rub, the butter and the, mm. oh, the salts <laughs> and the peppers. It was just a beautiful, beautiful piece of meat. I put it in the oven and her fast method is you put it on 500. I oh, said, does okay. your oven go to 500? Wow. It sure does. I think it can go to 575. I don't know. Not sure I put her in. I close the door. <laughs> I've got my other items in the warming drawer. I am feeling pretty pleased with myself that I'm just on top of it. About, I don't know, 10 minutes later. I, I So the, it's the hot oven. The beef tenderloin's in the hot oven. Yes, and I was actually so excited, too, because the OH had brought home a brand new meat thermometer. Brand oh. new. I was just... The afterglow from that itself. Yes, I didn't get the chicken times, but I got a brand new meat thermometer I was going to use. I'm just, like, so happy and excited. And then we're sitting in the kitchen jabbering, and my one daughter says, I feel like I smell smoke, Mom. And I said, oh, that's that's just the oven. You know, it kind of has that smell. When you, when you go over 450, it's fine. Then the other yeah. daughter, no, Mom, we, we really kind of smell smoke. Well, my sniffers maybe aren't quite as good. So I listened to them, looked over at the oven, and sure enough, there's smoke coming out. And I maybe see a slight spark again. Small, <laughs> small flame. So now being very experienced with this, Yes. I opened up the oven door, and I tell you, it was just tons of smoke poured out. And you know what happens next. Wah, the wah, wah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now all the alarms are going. I'm frantically shrieking at my OH once again because, of course, I can never remember the code. Yes. Thankfully, his memory banks are better, so he's punching in the code. We've got all the doors wide open. My daughter's dragging her little boy outside, which is like 15 degrees, but she's afraid he's breathing in smoke. It's pure chaos. And then, of course, you get the call from the fire department. Right. Yeah. And I can hear my husband say, so matter-of-factly, yes, we're all fine. We just burned the hell out of our beef tenderloin. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. Merry Christmas Eve. But you know what? There's, what? A, there's always a silver lining. Oh, good for you. Check out the smoking charred piece of meat. Cut it. It was still wonderful inside. Just seared it just a little bit in the pan, and we were good to go. It was delicious. I, and I think it tenderized it. it. I think it gave it a good smoky flavor and tenderized it. It was probably my best beef tenderloin. And you'll never be able to redo it again, will you? <laughs> no, I, well, you never know, Jane, I might. <laughs> well, I'm thinking right now, make a note of this, please, Laura. We, we might want to call, we might want to call this episode, We Burn the Hell Out of the Beef Tenderloin. Uh, it is a classic phrase. <laughs> that sums up your Christmas. So, so, so Merry Christmas to you. Yes. Um, I just wanted to tell you, I don't know if I told you this before, I saw on Facebook that a friend of mine had a garage Christmas. It reminded me of your baby shower in the garage. Oh, yes, because of the COVID, I assume? Or I think so, room? right? And, and she really pretty much looked like she created, she had, you know, photos up, that she created a whole, like, living room out in her garage and plenty of Christmas decorations, but... 
Wow. So I, that might be a, a thing now. The, huh. The, the garage party. parties. Right. Um, I have to, can I ask you to chat a minute about Spanx? Oh my goodness. See, you were so hesitant. I didn't know what you were. I know. I know. But Speaking I... about Spanx. All right. Let me, let me take a sip of my coffee, which I might note I'm drinking Cake Boss crunchy chocolate coffee that you, my dear sister, got me. Oh, she that... gave me a mixture of coffee flavors. I've had so much fun. So let me get a sip before we speak about Spanx. Mm. I will. Okay, continue. Well, you. in an episode a while back, we had said something about Spanx and like booty boosters and things like that. Yes. And and I was a little skeptical about Spanx, but alas and alas, you gave me a pair of Spanx for my birthday. Right. Which your birthday is, you know, around Thanksgiving. So, of course, I got the presents delivered to you about two days before Christmas. You did. You did. Yes. But that's pretty good. You were in the grace period. <laughs> the most this grace is, period. Only I'm just taking, a, you know, it, it was, it's this year or it was 2020. It was the 2020 yeah. birthday. Sorry. That's right. That's right. Your presents were about three weeks late, but I did give you some Spanx. And I love them. They're the faux leather. Now, let me tell you, I mean, they're they're pretty spiffy. I didn't know if at my age I should be wearing things like this, but I put them on. They fit like a glove. And they're Ooh. so darn comfortable. I love them. Love them. Love them. I, I've worn them almost three days in a row, if I dare admit that. And, and you like how they look on? They feel good? They're not. I do. The, the OH even said, oh, nice, you know what? Oh. B U T T I rear. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, yes, he so said that. So, so I wore them to my, my daughters. I went over the millennial gals as they are. And I said, hey, what do you think about my new Spanx? Well, the one girl looked at me because I thought I was just showing something fabulous and new. And she looked at me and she said, oh, yeah, mom, they're like the pair you got me two years ago. I totally forgot. <laughs> totally <laughs> forgot. I mean, I have like a vague memory of this. And it's like, ah. But anyway, I love them. She still loves them. She still wears them. So, again, we are not being paid by Spanx. That would be fun if we were, but we're not. But I give an A plus to the Spanx faux legging, the faux leather legging. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. I may have to try some too. Am I still allowed to? Is this boomer allowed to wear Spanx? Yes. I really think any age can wear Spanx. When I'm in my 80s, I may still have this pair. They're that oh, good. How fun for us. I know. Okay, good. All right. So, um, yeah, so happy, happy Spanx. It's something new to try. Yeah. All right. Um, I have a little, speaking of, of boomers, yes. which we are, of course. And we love you, boomers. Yes. Yes. I received a, just a wonderful present. Uh, it was a, a box of beautifully decorated little petty fours. Ooh. The little small cakes, little tiny individual cakes, probably like each one was like the size of a stamp, maybe. They were just precious. Oh, those are darling. Right. And they were decorated. Some, they all were decorated, but some of them had a letter on each one. So it spelled out Merry Christmas, Jean, if you can picture that. And then there they were, were decorated. There were a lot of petty fours. Yes, that's right. Because that's a lot of work. And, and it was just so much fun. And every day, the OH and I would eat maybe two. And, of course, we started off eating the decorated ones, the ones without the letters. Okay, clever first, right? Yeah, yeah, and then and then we worked our way through Mary, and then Christmas, and Jean was the last thing we ate. Wow, <laughs> it was really so. The end was, was the course. very last one. Yes, yes, and it was so nice, and I was so thrilled with this. But both on the box and the email that I got saying it was coming, there was no. There was like a blank where it said who it was from. Oh, a mystery. 
it was a mystery, which was cleared up pretty fast because the person who gave it, who's just a wonderful person, wonderful author, just just the best, sweetest ever, wrote and said, ha ha, you know, surprise, it was me. I'm glad she I did. Thought, yeah, we're boomers, you know, right? It happens. It does happen. Well, and sometimes it happens, not not of our boomer fault, I'd like to say, because I got delicious, absolutely delicious Portuguese English muffins. Well, they're not English. I should just say Portuguese muffins from mm. my in-laws, my, my daughter-in-law, her parents. They were the best. English muffins I've ever had in my life, but they're Portuguese muffins. But she texted me ahead of time and said, you might be getting a gift, but it, she couldn't get it on the, the email. It didn't work. So she said, just letting you know. So that was my Well, mystery. that was good. But so. I knew ahead of time. And then I sent a gift to the daughter-in-law and realized, I don't think there was a... You don't think there was a place? Yes. Anyway, there it goes. He but yes, yeah, so we've all kind of sent those mystery gifts, which get figured out. Which get figured out. And I think this year especially, I mean, how many times did I order things that never came? You get the email saying, you expected a delivery by 9 p.m. tonight. Yeah. Uh, be hovering by the door at 9 p.m. Uh, there would be no box. I still have a gift for my very good friend in my neighborhood, which was just like the perfect gift. I had seen it early December was perfect you know you get that perfect gift not just the obligatory yeah. socks but perfect gift and it still hasn't come and here we are in january so I, I, and it was, it was perfect yeah, but i don't know where it is they said delivered midnight 12 o'clock a.m on december 22nd well we're way beyond that and i'm still waiting i don't know we are that's just that was but now we're in 2021 and so Oh, speaking of, and so hopefully that's all better. Speaking of perfect gifts, I also got a very, very, well, besides the wonderful gifts I got from you, of course, I also got a lovely fruit basket with the biggest fruit. I mean, giant, like these all look like new, totally new models of fruit. These are like the Escalades of fruit. They're totally <laughs> with big beautiful. That was fun to receive too. But I saw on Facebook, speaking about special yes. presents, okay, which I think we were, um, a millennial friend of mine named Pam yes. posted just the sweetest um, post on Facebook telling us all that her husband had surprised her with a present and, and it just it was one of those perfect gifts, like you were saying. It was just perfect for her. And she actually cried tears of joy when she opened it. She was just so surprised and thrilled with wow. it. Wow. So I, I read yes. more. You know, what a fabulous present. Well, it's something I hadn't really heard of. And I don't know if you've heard of it. From the looks of how it's spelled, you might be tempted to call it cry cut but that would be wrong the name of this little machine which is what it is a little machine mm -hmm. is not cry cut it's cricket is how you say cricket. it all right C -R -I -C -U -T. right but it's spelled c-r-i-c-u-t and i think this is one of the big gifts of of this past christmas i found out that um cricket has a facebook page where you know, people who love cricket can share everything they're making and doing with it. And so it looked like everybody's having a wonderful time and that many people had been happily surprised with a cricket. So do you know anything about Never it? Heard of it. Cause I never heard of it. I, I messaged Pam and said, do tell me more about this cricket. Cause first of all, your post was so sweet and now you've got me really interested. What is it? Well, she told me that, um, she was mesmerized by the possibilities that it can do. You can make so much with it. You can make t-shirt iron-ons. You can make vinyl stickers. You can make stencils. Like if you were having a wedding, you could print out all the um, vinyl stickers and put them like on all the little champagne glasses you were going to give everybody. You could make the little sticker custom made to your colors and everything. Wow. And stick them on, right? Kind of like a and she labeling likes, machine, but better. 
oh, like a zillion times better. And you're right, it runs, you can use your phone or, you know, some kind of device like that. And they, they have all kinds of designs, everything you can make. You could make, so you can make those cutesy little like signs, like life is a beach. You could print out one of those. You could print out decals to put on things. You could print out things to stitch on pillows. You'll have to look at it. I don't know if I'm describing yeah, it. You're really doing pretty well. well. So like, do, does it come with set designs or can you find any design you want? Oh, right. You could, it come, you could, yeah, there's an of app course. for that. There's an of app course. for all that. So you can make a zillion, a zillion things. And it's fun to look at what everybody's made. So, of course, it, it's one of those things I think it kind of like sucks you in. It's like, I, now I desperately want one. Even though I tell myself, first of all, you wouldn't use it. You'd have all those supplies of everything. That's the one that you could go crazy buying all the different colors of vinyl and this and that. But it's like, I want one. So I'm trying to think of maybe we could all get one as a family and hmm. share. Well, your birthday I is her. coming up in about a month. Yeah, and we, could, we could all share it. Oh, it's too, that's too much for a birthday well, present. But I asked her, it? If, well, it's it runs probably between around three and $400, depending on the model. And then you can get bundles of all the supplies oh. that you need. But if you want to make all those you know all those things like people decorate with now all those cutesy little sayings and words wow. you could you know paint a, a wooden frame and put things in it and so that. i'm looking forward to seeing what pam does i'm looking forward to seeing what pam yeah. makes i asked her if she really thought that boomers could do it should boomers be allowed to use That's a good cricket? question apparently yes well she said yeah there's an app and but if you're, you know, patient and like to figure things out, we could do it. Now, if I'm looking on this Facebook page about cricket, it looks like the kids can all make fabulous things the minute they open it up. Like everybody who has children, their 11 year olds are, you know, pretty much have their own Etsy store now with everything they've made with it. If you're older, yeah, it's going to take a couple of days. All right. <laughs> well, to learn how something new. So cricket, chirp, chirp. Cricket, but cricket. it's spelled cry cat, but cricket. Always good to know about the latest. I feel like I'm up to I date guess, now. I like to hear. Yeah, excellent. Right. And, and okay. again, just, now I want to hear something from yeah. you. I was yeah, just oh, going to ask you yes. quickly: Do we get this? I assume just online, the cricket. Oh, I think Joanne Fabric has it. Places Ooh. like that have them too. Not right now. After, but Christmas, would we know what aisle crazy. to look in? I still, God love you. God oh. love you, all my millennial children. I love you to death. But they still call, wondering where things are in the grocery store. So they'll be in the grocery yeah, store. Yeah, we have we have talked about this before on prior podcasts. I hate to be repetitive, but our dear children need to learn their grocery stores. And this is apparently a skill you and I have as boomers. We know our grocery stores. For example, I'll ask you, child calls. They're desperate. Where is the shake and bake? I and that is hard to find. That is. Hard do you have to a find. guess? I um I do know where it is. I think in my grocery store it's actually yes. the baking. Yes, bingo. Aisle. You answered correct. Which would fool you. That would fool you. As our marshmallows. Yep. Marshmallows are yep. another tough one. They're also in the baking aisle. Well, haven't your kids been? You're still having a little bit of a communication problem with them, right? Maybe that's part it. Of it the could be. In fact, the other day, because I have the daughters here right now over the holidays the one said Yay. i i told her i'll i'll pick you up at a quarter of two now what is what does that mean yeah. to you exactly what you said i know yeah, exactly you what be, time it would be i probably even know it better than if you had said 145 like quarter two boom yes, automatic I mean, 145 i might have to pause and in fact second. if but, we yes. even knew about what time before we started the conversation i would just say i'll pick you up at a quarter of that's all we need. Correct. Yes. Or I'll call you back right. in a quarter. Right. Right. If we knew yeah, the Yeah. But already. she just yeah. so sweetly said, Mom, you know, I never know what that means. I thought, God love you. You don't. She, she's like, why hey. can't you just tell me 145? I mean, I had to say it was 145 for her. So plus her heart. But maybe when they, I don't know, when they turn 35, does it click in? Or is this just something they have never learned? All right. Who knows? 
Right. They're all digital, right? Yep. So they're, they're all just used to that. They're all great to digital. Whole right. different world. So they can they can work the cricket, but they can't. All right. So you have it. I think I, I do have another one. And these are real things they've said, right? I mean, you aren't making these up. These are I actual. I kind of wish I was making these up, but these are these are real <laughs> things, my dear. And I raised them. I can only blame myself. Okay. So we were working on putting up baby proofing things, putting up the fireplace and the the baby gate, all of these things that kind of take some patience and, you know, so everyone's kind of looking like we'll never get through this. And I said, we just need to gird our loins, gird our loins. Is that Boy, I gird my loins a lot. I have to gird my loins a lot. That, that's yeah. a very meaningful thing to say. I have many things in life. You have, you have to do to... that. You just have to gird your loins and go yes, for it. gird. Gird your loins. But they looked at me like, were they talking about the pork tenderloin? What? That I just burned? What? And they just looked totally lost. Totally lost. And I said, haven't either one of you heard me say this through the years? Or do you? No. It, it's, I, I mean, it's just completely out of their hemisphere of speaking. So, you know, I, like, I really get a kick out of this. So, gird your loins, millennials. Gird your loins. Keep, keep track yes. of these. Keep track of these. Yeah, it is, 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 um, is baby E, your nine month old baby, is he talking at this? Oh, he, to... he is, that, he's just saying all those wonderful, uh, you know, blabbling babbling words i'm blabbling myself um he he said mama on the mom's birthday which was real sweet it was his it was his oh! little mama and he can do m's and b's and i feel like he said bottle the other day i don't know that he really did but he reached and and it sounded like bottle so i'm going with it he's Oh, I that sounds fantastic. Oh, that's yeah, so, old. so it's it's He's getting precious. We're just enjoying life as grandparents. Um, pretty soon we'll be talking about the key things he said and and, and baby L yeah. too. We'll be talking about it is fun, but I tell you, I took baby E to the doctor the other day because my daughter had the work couldn't get off. It's just a well checkup, no big deal. So A, they're heavy. I mean, you put them in those baby car seats. I could barely lift him, but I managed to stumble in, got through the appointment. But what I'm not used to, even though I love being a grandmother, is now everybody just calls you grandma. Okay, grandma. Well, he needs to come back in a year, grandma. It just it just sounded so different to me. So <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, kind of like they, they would call you mom. Right. Like Instead of mom, mom it's just now and grandma. So it's a it's a new world for me. Yeah, which on the one hand you love, but on the other hand it would kind of. I mean, I was yeah. wearing my spanks for gosh darn sakes. Yeah, grandma, <laughs> grandma yeah. spanks. We almost have changed. Um, um, oh Lord, it's been fun. It's it's been fun. I'm so glad we're back to yes, podcasting, and and I hope everyone who's listening, you know, had a wonderful. Or, or at least they're still feeling that afterglow. We had some things that made their their holidays merry and exactly. bright. And, you know, just speaking of who listen to us, I really am thankful because the people who listen to us, we, we get stats. We don't really worry about the stats because we, we do. love doing this. But we do look at the stats. It's kind of fun. And we have a nice amount of people listening to us. And I would have to say that they're not relatives. <laughs> no, they're not. I mean, these dear millennial daughters I talk about, for the most part, my, my one daughter-in-law does listen, but, but no. Oh, she listens a lot. She even mentioned Yes, she a is blog, a faithful so, supporter. Yeah. You know who you are, and thank you, my dear. But yeah, the rest of them, do you listen? No, sorry, no. But they'll talk about every other podcast. They love the murder mystery podcast, and oh, well. Such is life. So maybe we need to be a little bit darker or more mysterious. Yeah, we'll have to come. Well, we mentioned mystery <laughs> with the mystery gifts, so maybe that puts us in that category. I don't know. Oh, okay, good. Well, next time, Laura, and and I, 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 either next time or hopefully in an upcoming episode, or who knows, because I may forget about all this. But what I'm planning to talk about next time is a little bit more about my move 
and a downsizing epiphany. Oh I my, had. that sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on to that thought. I just jotted it down. Should you forget? Not that we would. Good, and I think you have a thought that sounds really yes, interesting. Yes, I need to discuss my phone fears. <laughs> phone fears. Oh, I. Oh, good. I can't wait to hear about that. So let's, whoops, oh, you're writing I'm writing down. them both so down. We'll do our best now, hopefully I will be able to find Talk them. about them next time. <laughs> and so we're getting ready to say goodbye. So everyone who's listening, you probably want to take out your um, AirPods right now because we're going to stumble through how you can and find we do us. Stumble. So goodbye, everybody. But if you're still listening, we always thank Pat at Speak Up Talk Radio who helps put these together for us. And you can find us on our website, okboomerpod.com, and both Instagram and Twitter at ok underscore boomerpod. We did it. We're Woo. back. Well done. So happy new year. We'll chat Sounds soon. Good. Toodaloo. Be sure to come back to Beautiful Ohio and the OK Boomer podcast. To listen to previous episodes or to drop us a line, visit okboomerpod.com. Okay